Um, first of all, Jürgen, obviously you've announced today that Virgil van Dijk has signed a new long-term contract. Can you just give us your reaction to the, that good news for the football club? Yes, great news. Um, the good thing about this signing is that we know him already, that we used him before already quite successfully, and um, and we are really happy that he's happy here. And um, even more so after that, obviously, very difficult last year, that he is back on track, um, trains with the team, and um, prepares his very successful, hopefully very successful future at this club. So, yeah, absolutely great, great news. Imagine we would have to buy this boy now. So. Thank God we only had to give him a new contract. And as you prepare to kick off the new season, how much are you as a group all looking forward to being back in front of, well, nearly full stadia uh, and, and back in front of fans? <laughs> yeah, we, oh, we, had, we, we got a little uh, sense of obviously how it is with fans again uh, last Sunday and Monday. So it was absolutely great and changed the whole game. And uh, the little difference is now that we obviously play at Norwich and not in Enfield and they will be exactly as desperate as our, peop as our people were um, before they went back to Anfield, so um, we have to, we would, we are better ready for a proper fight there. That's what we are preparing for all the time now, um, because the competition starts and uh, the the, the preseason friendlies are over. It's always nice to try a few things to test here and there, but now all the other stuff um, is there again. We play for points. We play for. For, um, for our supporters, obviously, for fulfilling expectations, dreams, whatever. So that is the difference. But we had the longest preseason for a while, especially the longest preseason um, with a big, big squad together. A lot of players uh, were involved in a full preseason. Some came back at least early enough. Some came back a little bit later. So, but um, now they are all here, and um, it's a good situation. And that's what you want at the end of a preseason that you have a a few choices to make and then to start the season with the first game and we know um, the intensity will now be completely different and we think in a moment we are ready for it but we have to prove that on Saturday. Okay, thank you Vinny. Two for Steve White and then we'll go to Juliet Farrington from the BBC. Hello there Jürgen. Having said you you Hi. had that pre-season to work with your players and considering all the injury problems you had last season how close are you to to having the team you want to select for the first game of the campaign? Oh, they're all here. And uh, um, all our players are here in the moment. And that means we have to make um, selection. Of how, but of course, for example, Hendo and Thiago started late to train. So their, their, their pre-season, if you want, started last week. And they need it because we don't prepare for one game. We prepare for a full season with a lot of games with the most intense in the most intense league in the world. So. Um, apart from that, um, all the others trained at least two weeks, um, and some of them have said trained five weeks. So I have exactly the situation I want to have. Um, I hope it stays like this. That we we had so far, we have no major injuries apart from Robo, obviously, who is um, not available for the weekend, and Curtis, but he is fit again. It's just a protocol, and we, we of course respect that. And um, so that's it, and that's now. The situation, a good situation, but still, um, I have to make some decisions. And you mentioned there the intensity of the Premier League, considering that some of your rivals have gone out and, and really invested heavily this summer. Are you expecting that the fight for the Premier League title to be even more intense than ever this time around? I don't know if that could be, is that possible. So, um, yeah, last year, obviously, um, uh, City um, clear, yeah, was um, the gap was pretty big uh, the year before. With us, the gap was pretty big. Um, I'm not sure if it can get even more intense for all the rest. So we will see. Yeah, Chelsea obviously uh, is not hiding expect uh, the ambitious ambitions, and Man United isn't. City isn't. We don't want to hide our expectations because our ambitions because we um, we we, we want to fight for everything, but. Whatever will happen in the season, we don't know now. But um, in this moment, yeah, it will be a massive fight. And I mentioned only these four, but it will not be only these four. Looks like Leicester made really good business again. Um, Arsenal is trying. Tottenham is obviously trying really hard. Uh, and there are so many teams. Um, West Ham played the best season for a long, long time last year. They didn't get worse over the summer. So they are, uh, it, will, it will be an interesting league again. Very, very interesting. So let's see how it starts. And then we can talk about that and then let's make the next step. 
Thank you, Gerda. Thank you. No problem, Steve. We'll go Juliet Farrington then, Ian from Talksport. Juliet, go on. Hey Jürgen, good to see you again. Um, after the brilliant pre-season that you would have appeared to have had with that month away, you know, just training and working in that your own little bubble that you had, um, are you as excited, and you talk about playing for the fans with their expectations and dreams, are you as excited as the fans are for this season? Definitely. We are exactly the same time to, to we are waiting exactly for the same amount of time. So, um, I had four weeks preseason training, um, which is absolutely great, or five weeks, which is absolutely great. And um, I love that. And it's the best part of the season, actually, because you can work on all the things you want to see later in, this, in, the, in the season. And it was good. It was good. But unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that the preseason of Norwich or the other teams were, were, not, were not bad as well. So they will be really good prepared as well. So that's good. So it, the, the most important thing is that you are ready for the competition then. And there's a completely different intensity to preseason games, obviously, which we have now again in the Premier League. Everything together, missing a chance in a preseason friendly is not a problem. It's always easy to explain. We had a hard session before yesterday and stuff like this. Now we should be rested. We, we, I don't expect 100%. Um, I expect 100, the, the available 100% tomorrow. That means um, I want us to develop during the season to reach a specific point, our absolute peak, and keep that then going for the full season. Um, but... I expect the available 100% for tomorrow, and that's a lot. So and that's what we have to show. And then we have to be ready for all these pressure situations that you that you score or they, they score and you have to react and all this kind of stuff. And that's something you can talk about in preseason, what we did, but then there's a difference, still a difference between the reality and what we are talking about before. So how do we react in, in stress situations? That's all interesting, and I'm really excited about that. That's starting now again because we all want to play proper competitive games. Preseason is important, but we all prepare only for the league, and the league starts now, and it's very exciting. Thank you, Julia. I'll go to Ian uh, for talk sport, and then to Carl Woodward from BBC Motorsport. Hi, Jürgen. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, Jürgen, were you surprised that clubs like Manchester City spent £100 million on one player this summer that um, obviously we saw Manchester United spend over £100 million on a couple of players and that Chelsea spent nearly £100 million on a striker, considering we've just come through a pandemic. And how important is this to get a good start to the season as well? February 2020, when when it when the pandemic started and we nobody knew how it will how it how long it will be and on. But I, I was hoping, obviously, that it's over in a month, in two months, whatever. Now we we are so much smarter, we know so much more about it, and it's still uh, still a um, difficult time. So it was for everybody. It was for football clubs as well, obviously, for different reasons. And that's probably the reason why you asked me if I'm surprised. No, because these clubs don't depend on this kind of things. I think um, it's just not. Um, yeah, we, we all know the situation of Chelsea and we all know the situation of City and we all know the situation of, um, of PSG, for example. What United is doing, I don't, know, I don't know exactly how they do it, but we have obviously our way to do it. And that's what was always the same. Since I'm in, it was always the same. We can spend and we are allowed to spend the money we earn. Um, and that's what we always did. So this year, uh, we spent already before we earned money um, with with Ibu Kunate because after last season it was obviously clear we cannot take any risk in this position at all, um, and that's it. And um, that's our situation. And it's not about me being surprised. I'm I'm never surprised about the, the financial power of Chelsea or City or United. Uh, I'm long enough in the country to know that they always find a solution to do these kind of things. And um, for us, it's our way. So uh, we keep the team together. That's um, a, 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 that's an important part of business as well. I know it's not that as exciting as it is with um, with signing new players for the outside world, but it looks like always this, the summer is always the same. If you people think if you don't sign, you don't work, that's not the case. We are constantly um, thinking about the presence. The, or the past, and the past not so much, the present and the future. So short term and long term, what do we have to do? What can we do? How can how does it look? How has the team to look this year? How will it look next year? And all this kind of stuff. And that's the situation. So maybe not the most exciting, but if you are a real Liverpool fan, you are really happy 
about the news the club delivered in the last few weeks. So signing Alison Becker um, until I don't know uh, when. Um, the same with Trent Alexander Arnold, Fabinho. Um, um, who else did? We, sorry. Oh, virtual. Yeah, obviously recently, only recently. So and others will follow. So that's great. That's absolutely great news, but it's just not as spectacular out there, obviously, seen as it was. But if other teams wanted to sign these players, they would have to pay a lot of money, and we have them already. So that's good. So now we have a really good squad together. Um, we should be in a better situation than we were last year. So let's try to build on that, what, what we achieved last year, and let's see where it will, we will end up. And is it, Ian also asked, is it a good starting point? Sorry? Is it a good starting point? Is it a good or bad starting point? Yeah. A good start is important, but we will not. We wouldn't stop if we, if we couldn't start well. So um, that's that's the case. But yeah, I, I love to to win the first game, but I think it would be disrespectful for, to talk about these kind of things before we face Norwich even. So we have to go there. We will do that this afternoon um, to have a nice sleep overnight, play there tomorrow afternoon, and I know how good they are, and I know how how great a job is Daniel Park is doing there. They obviously gave him for a situation for a club of like Norwich is incredible trust in him a, a new four year contract which is absolutely great um so they believe there in the, his work and the project uh, and you can see that they lost good players or one at least uh, what i know about and they, but they brought did sensational business uh, billy gilmore is probably obviously one of the biggest scottish talent for the last 50 years uh, bring him in on loan. Then Rashika, I know from the Bundesliga. Sargent, I know from the Bundesliga. So two really good, exciting strikers, offensive players. So Los Bundia, yes, but um, the replacements they found. Now the little Greek boy who came in last week. So good business. So exciting what they are doing. And um, we have to be absolutely spot on to have a good start. And if we had a good start, then we can talk about that. We're going to order Carl Woodward and from Merseyside, and then we'll go to Carl Markham from Black Star Session. Carl. Hi, Jürgen. Hi, Carl. Um, just reflecting on the end of last season, the top four looked at it was getting away from you until you made that brilliant dash to the line. So how much a boost did that give to you and the players? And what can you take from that going into the new campaign? Oh, absolutely. We, we, we had to, a lot, a lot. Um, this again, this kind of never give up. And I, I would like to say that I ten met 10 games before the end of the season that I thought, oh, come on, we can do that still and stuff like this. It wasn't like that. I didn't think about it. That helped. I, I just thought, come on, let's win the next game. Let's see where we end up. And uh, in the end, that's what helped. So we just stayed in a situation. Yes, last two, three games, we knew it's kind of in our in our own hands again. And there came pressure up again. Uh, we came through it We we for us. The third place last year was really not far off the other positions in the two years before in the league, to be honest, um, and was really special with all the problems we had. We found in the end a way how to win football games. Um, and now that's a very important message, obviously, because there's one way how you play when you are at your absolute best. That's obviously great to watch and what you want to see and um, makes winning football games more likely. But then there is another way to win football games when you are not at your best, when you have to solve problems. We need a little bit to, to, to find this way exactly how we can do it. It's not that it's rocket science and we don't know how it works, but we needed a little bit to get used to this slightly different approach. And um, so, but we found it early enough, finished the situation. It was obviously absolutely um, sensational feeling. And yes, that will help us because it is another experience we made together and how all experiences, uh, when you get through them, then you are smarter than before. Okay. Carl, one question, if that's OK. So we've got two more to come after you, then a break out. Carl, no problem. Hi, again. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm sure this won't bother Virgil, but there's, there's so much expectation placed on, on his return. Uh, I'm wondering if, if, if that's right, that's, that's a, a fair thing to, to assume. It's virtual. So, and uh, Virtual was out for a long time, is now training with the team for three and a half weeks, uh, which is absolutely great. Played minutes in different games, played long, could have played last game, I'm pretty sure could have played 90 minutes, um, which I just didn't try um, to do it. And um, so he's in, a, he's in a good shape and, and, uh, and he's an important player for us. So I'm really happy with the situation. And then Neil and James to finish. Uh, sorry, we are busy today. And then we'll go to the breakdown. Neil? Hi, Jürgen, you okay? Hi, Neil. 
Yeah, just want to ask about Harvey Elliott. I mean, he um, he's made a big impression in pre-season. Last season, he went out on loan quite late in the window. Would you say that he's he's moved past that situation now and he's made himself part of the of the first team squad for this season? That's the plan. That's the plan. He showed up in an exceptional way. He was not the only one, but of course, Harvey's only 18, so it might be really exceptional. The only problem Harvey has, we don't deal with Kredium like an 18-year-old boy, <laughs> at least not in training sessions or on the pitch, because it's just... Um, his football is pretty mature in, in a lot of moments. Um, off the pitch, he's much more a kid than on the pitch. Um, and so that's really exciting. Uh, yes, we are happy about that. He brings, um, like all our midfielders, they're all different and it brings different dimension into the game, which is good. His overview is great. Um, dribbling, top, passing, range, really good. Um, and a lot of things. So it's really interesting. So he played at top preseason, but so did Kate Gordon. He's only 16. Um, and um, that's the situation. If you if you don't have these spaces in the squad, you block these boys, and we have to keep these spaces open for these exceptional talents. That's what we try. It's not always possible, and it doesn't mean it will happen next week, next month, next year. It's just we need to show that we are a club who who gives the opportunity to these kind of boys and uh, to these kind of talents, and that's what we want to show. And that's why it was really. Really good preseason so far for him, and um, yeah, let's see how we can use that. Thank you, Neil. Before we go to the embargo section, just a reminder for those who are putting their hands up, we have been on for a while, so I can't take everybody to put their hand up in it. But if you want to do so now, I'll try to make you change to finish the open section. Hi, Jurgen. Just in terms of Genie Wijnaldum, obviously he left the club this summer. He hasn't been directly replaced in terms of the business you've done so far. Is that down to finances, or is that because you genuinely do see? solutions within the squad because obviously he was such a, a, a key part of, of your unit he was he was absolutely he was the most consistently available player at least and he was and, and i think you don't have to hide the relationship i had with jenny and how much i uh, um, loved his way of play how, how reliable he was as a player and all this kind of stuff so but he's not here anymore and um so now you tell me if you if you would sign a midfielder and if then tell me the name and I think about it. Think that would so. be really interesting. No, just to say we can count our midfielders and then you tell me we need we need to replace Gini Wijnaldum. So we have now um, so far Henderson and Thiago had not really in being involved in the preseason. Maybe a few days now. Let me say nearly a week. Um, we have played quite a few games with Milner, um, Navigator, and Harvey. So we have another midfield where, which played now the second game, I think, that was Oxley, Fabinho, Curtis Jones. Curtis is another player um, who can and will make the next step and is exceptional talent. So, yeah, I think these are the, the pure midfielders. I for sure forgot somebody, which would not be nice. Um, but as it's already only the numbers and different profiles of players and stuff like this, and now you tell me which player we need. Just, I, I'm really interested, not angry, not annoyed, not at all. I just, I'm really interested. Which kind of player would you like to sign? What should the player have we should sign? So should he score what? more goals than Ginny? Should he defend better than Fab? Should he be more creative than um, Nabi, Curtis, Ox, Harvey? What, is that? What, does, what does you want? What do you want? Well, I, th I, think, I think a lot of fans would say, there's been a lack of goals for midfield. Maybe that would be that would be one one element that people would say that could be improved. Yeah, so he should score more goals. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Um, then if the, if I'm not, I don't know which midfielder it is, then who, who scores more goals from from that position? Um, then then the boys of us. We, we we never said we don't have to improve. We have to improve, but we have to to score more goals from midfield positions. You have to. You have to create the situations for that. So it's not that you just can say, "When a midfielder, if a midfielder has to play for us in in the way we play, then it's not that easy that he's constantly in in goal scoring uh, situations." So they have to do different jobs. We have a different, we have a specific setup of our team. You see where our fullbacks are usually in attacking moments. You see who's in the box, who is there. We could have scored more goals, definitely yes. It's not about having a different player for that. It's had deep. Um, um, it's about different positioning in that situation, and our boys can do that as well. Our, I can really, I really understand that, and I'm not a sixth year here, and I think pretty much apart from the year when we signed 
um, Ali and World, it was always the same. It looks always we don't sign enough, we don't do enough, and this kind of stuff. But we were constantly on improving the team, and one part of it is signing new players. But um, the most important thing, and I actually think our our fans um, appreciate that as well, is having a group together who is fun to watch, who is exciting to watch, who is fighting together, who creates a specific, who is definitely 100% um, committed to the club and to the values of the club and all this kind of stuff. And we have that. So in that loud, let's fight with all we have and whatever happens until the end of the preseason, we will see. But we cannot just add on players to this squad and say, so, and now let's have a look how that works. Because you have to deal with the squad the whole year. And that's why if somebody wants to leave or leaves or stuff like this, then we have to think, do we have to replace it or not? With Chini, it's like that. But we have, if you want, two players who are not new, but can make the next step with Harvey and Curtis. And Nabi can make the next step. Had a full preseason, but it's, it's exceptional preseason. So he can make the next step. We check out, just ignore that. And he is an outstanding player, which everybody wants to sign probably. And these kind of things. That's our situation. And um, it's, we cannot compare. I said it before, we cannot compare to, to the other clubs. They obviously don't have any, any limits. We have limits, but we were quite successful even with having limits in the last few years and that's what we should try again and not using it as an excuse if we will not win a game we say then it was because we didn't sign him or him that will not be the case we want to use our sources and that's passion and and and, and a good way and and and, and desire and, and a clear plan and all this kind of stuff and direction flexibility all this kind of stuff that's our football that's what we want to use and then let's see which is the right way. We cannot just we cannot spend money we don't have. So or we, we can we cannot. Maybe others can't can, but we can't. So that's it. That's my information.